Now let's work through a quick redox analysis of a photo-induced electron transfer process to calculate delta G for the process, the standard free energy change of the reaction, to determine whether it's thermodynamically favorable or not. The situation here is we have photo-excited naphthalene reacting with 1,4-dicyanobenzene in an oxidative quenching of the excited state to form the radical cation of naphthalene and the radical anion of 1,4-dicyanobenzene. Thermodynamically speaking, three things are happening here. First, naphthalene is undergoing photoexcitation or has undergone photoexcitation, so we have the energy of the S1 state available, quote unquote, to use to power this photoinduced electron transfer process. And that amounts to negative 3.94 eV or electron volts. What else happens here? Well, 1,4 dicyanobenzene is reduced to the dicyanobenzene radical anion. And the reduction potential associated with that process is negative 1.64 volts. Now to go from the reduction potential to the energy, we need to multiply by the charge involved, which is the charge of an electron since one electron is transferred. So we're going to add, and I'm gonna to try to be as systematic as I can with the signs, the charge involved, which is negative elementary charge, times the reduction potential of 1,4 dicyanobenzene, which is negative 1.64 volts. Finally, the third thing that's happening is the oxidation of naphthalene. What we're given here is the reduction potential of the naphthalene radical cation as positive 1.60 volts. Since oxidation of the naphthalene is happening, we're gonna throw a negative sign right here to reverse the sign of this potential but we still need to incorporate this factor of negative E since that's the charge involved in this oxidation process. And so what appears here is minus negative E times the associated reduction potential, positive 1.6 volts. And to continue the calculation, I'm actually going to calculate the second two terms first since they represent the energy change associated with ground state electron transfer from naphthalene to 1,4-dicyanobenzene. In other words, if there were no photo excitation involved here, what would the energy change be? We can get that by just calculating these two terms first. The other thing I'll say is that the choice of electron volts as a unit is highly convenient here. We don't need to worry about what the elementary charge is, since the electron volt is by definition the elementary charge times one volt. So to solve for this number, all we have to do is kind of shove the E in front of the V to make the unit electron volt. So in the absence of photo excitation, what we end up with here is positive 3.24 electron volts. And this as a positive number indicates a highly disfavored, strongly disfavored thermodynamically electron transfer process, much, much greater than zero, right? However, notice what happens when we throw photo excitation into the mix we've gone from positive 3.24 electron volts to a total delta G for the photo-induced electron transfer of negative 0.7 electron volts. And so photo excitation of naphthalene has driven this electron transfer process and caused what would have been a disfavored electron transfer process to take place. At this point, we've learned how to think about the kinetics of PET as a rate constant for quenching, KQ, and the thermodynamics of PET as a delta G, a free energy change for the process. And so now what we can do is investigate the effect of the thermodynamic free energy difference on the rate of PET. Rim and Weller did this back in the 1970s, and the graph that they generated is shown here. And we can see the two kinetic regimes that we talked about earlier very clearly in this graph. When delta G is very negative, when the PET process is profoundly favored thermodynamically, we see that the rate constant of quenching, which is plotted on the y-axis, basically flattens out around 10 to the 10th per molar per second. And this is a situation where the rate of quenching itself, the rate of electron transfer is so fast that we're under diffusion control the observed rate constant of quenching is controlled by the rate of diffusion or the rate of collisions of the molecules with each other. As we move from strongly exergonic PET toward not so exergonic and endergonic PDT with delta G greater than zero, 
we start moving into what we might call the activation control region, where the rate constant of quenching is controlled by the activation energy of the reaction, which for an endothermic PET process is at least as large as the delta G, at least as positive as the delta G. Here we see these two key regions, or kinetic regimes as we called them earlier, where the rate constant of quenching is controlled either by diffusion or the activation energy. Now the dotted line here is going to be of interest to us in the very near future. This dotted line is the prediction of a theory of electron transfer known as Marcus theory. And it's a highly counterintuitive idea. What this dotted line predicts is that as the PET process becomes more energetically favorable with a more negative delta G, the rate of electron transfer actually decreases. This is counterintuitive and probably go, goes against your intuitive understanding of how rate and thermodynamics quote unquote should work with the re reaction accelerating, getting faster as the delta G gets more negative. Marcus had a bone to pick with that idea in the context of electron transfer theory, and there is a logic to this that we'll understand in a future video.